Hey friends, welcome to a new week of science learning. This week we're going to be learning about Earth's spheres. To begin, I'm going to ask you to start filling in a KWL chart. Remember that the K in this chart stands for what you already know about a topic. So here you can record information that you might already know. How do we categorize or how do we classify matter on Earth? Think about the different kinds of matter that you can find on Earth. We know that we have solids, such as soil, rocks, animals, people. We have liquids, like water. And we have gases, like oxygen and hydrogen and nitrogen that are in our atmosphere. So think about what you already know about how we can categorize matter on Earth. Solids, liquids, and gases. And we know that everything that has substance to it and is composed of atoms and molecules is matter. Think about what you might like to know about how we categorize matter on Earth or how we put it into different groups. Write down at least one question that tells what you would like to know about Earth's spheres. The L portion of your chart, we're going to return to this at the end of the lesson, and you're going to fill in important ideas that you've learned as well as science vocabulary. Okay, so let's learn about what we mean when we talk about Earth's spheres. Now, a sphere is something that we talk about in geometry sometimes. It's a shape. It's a perfect circle, a three-dimensional circle. The Earth itself is a sphere. A basketball is a sphere. But in this case, when we talk about Earth's spheres, we're talking about categories of matter. It's not a physical ball or circle. So each sphere is a category. And the categories are for water, living things, land, or air. And each of these four subsystems has a name, a special name. And those names are the geosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere. We're going to learn a little bit about each of those spheres now. Okay, first we're going to learn about the hydrosphere. Hydro is a Greek word that means water. Whenever you see um, a word that has this root word in it, you know that it has something to do with water. Like hydropower is power generated by moving water. When, if somebody tells you, okay, make sure that you hydrate today, they're telling you to consume a lot of water. So the hydrosphere includes all of the water on the Earth's surface, including the water that you would find in oceans, seas, lakes, ponds, rivers, and streams. Those are all different kinds of bodies of water. If you um, go out during, if you have gone out during spring break and taken a look at some of the local creeks and streams, those are smaller bodies of water, but the water contained in those creeks is part of the hydrosphere. The water in the air that falls as rain is part of the hydrosphere. The water that's up in the sky in the form of clouds going through the water cycle is part of the hydrosphere. Even the water deep underground that we pump up out of the ground through like a well or something, all water is part of the hydrosphere. Next, we have the biosphere. Bio comes from the Greek word for life. So when you get to high school and you take a biology class, you're studying the science of life. The biosphere is made of the parts of Earth where life exists. It includes living organisms in all biomes of the Earth. Deserts, tundras, rainforests, grasslands. Living things can be categorized as things that reproduce, grow, and die, meaning something that has a life cycle. So every piece of living matter on the earth is part of the biosphere. Next we have the geosphere. 
Geo comes from the Greek word for the ground. If you um, get to college and take a class on geology, you'll learn about rocks and minerals. Um, so anytime you see that geo root word, it's related to the earth or the ground. So the geosphere is the earth itself. It includes non-living soil. So the particles of the soil that are not living, um, rocks and minerals, dust in the desert, dust in the air that is blown into the air by winds, anything that's earth, soil, rocks, or minerals, sand or dust, it's part of the geosphere. And it doesn't matter what like location the rocks or minerals find themselves in. It's still part of the geosphere. Lastly, we have the atmosphere. Atmosphere, um, this word comes from the Greek word for air. The atmosphere includes all of the gases that surround our planet. Earth's atmosphere is composed of about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% other gases. Our atmosphere is part of what makes Earth a good habitat for life. Other planets don't have an atmosphere that allows enough water to stay close to the ground and feed life. So that's part of why Earth is a, a unique planet in that we have so much um, biodiversity here. It's because of our atmosphere. Okay, so now we've gone through and we've learned about each of the Earth's spheres. Now we're going to come back and talk about what you've learned. Think about the definition that I gave you for each sphere. So you need to have these words in this last column. Hydrosphere. Remember, that's the water and ice, oceans, ponds, and lakes, any kind of water on Earth's surface, under the Earth's surface, or in the atmosphere of the Earth. Any kind of water. The water on Earth's surface and in our atmosphere supports a variety of ecosystems and organisms. It shapes landforms, and the water even influences climate or patterns of weather. We're going to be learning about that this week. Next word you need to type into this column is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is all of the gases surrounding Earth, such as nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. The atmosphere also includes the patterns of winds and movements of clouds around the Earth. We also learned about the biosphere, which is all living matter, including humans. The last word for you to define is the geosphere. Remember that the geosphere is the solid earth, solid and molten rock, soil, and sediments on Earth's surface. So go ahead and make sure that you define those words. And that's it for today. Join me tomorrow for another lesson learning about Earth's spheres.